Welcome to my talk. Uh, I started calling it Creativity in the Classroom, but maybe uh, how can teachers, or can teachers even, uh, encourage creativity in their students? Is what I'll be discussing. Okay. These slides and everything I talk about, you can find at creativityprojects.blogspot.com. Somebody else had taken creativity with a Y, so I had to fit in uh, three of these. Five years ago, or four years ago, I had made a game in my class, or at my university, and a coworker, wow, Brian, you're so creative. I thought, thank you. What does that mean? So uh, I started a blog, started writing about this, looking into it. And what you're going to see is the last two or three years of my look, of my research. It is not formal research, it's things I've done as a hobbyist, as an enthusiast. You will see on occasion, such and such, Dean in brackets. That's me. I don't want to, you to pretend or imagine that it's any formal or reputable claim. <laughs> This is what we'll be talking about. So, when I talk about uh, creativity, I'm talking about producing something new, not reproducing. So, paint by numbers is beautiful, but it's not creativity. It's not creative. Uh, man, my fonts are really out here. Uh, it's fun, but not easy. Really, they were lined up. It's fun, but not easy. Uh, I'll be talking a lot about uh, Csikszentmihalyi. Uh, he talked about flow. A psychologist from Chicago talked about flow. Uh, and so he, he talk, describes a lot of this. The fun feeling, uh, hard work, and fun together. So it's not, it's not necessarily easy. We can do research on this. It's not exactly magic. Uh, the ancient Greeks talked about the muses. They didn't know where creati creative impulses or ideas came from. They thought it was a gift from the gods, from the muses. Uh, we've learned a little since then. Maybe I'll start with that. Uh, there was a study, uh, researchers hung two ropes, and the, they were deliberately, you couldn't reach all, both ropes. And so they bring in a subject, hold both. Some of them figured it out very quickly, but if the subjects who took 10 minutes, I can't, I can't, uh, the researcher would come up, bump one of the ropes, you can do it, I know you can, just try again. Bump one of the ropes, and the subject, I know, and be done. They, how did you know to do that? I don't know, I just, it suddenly appeared to me. So the researcher had set it up. They were the spark. You know, by bumping the rope, making it swing, they had convinced the subject, or they had given the subject the idea of how to do this, but the subject didn't know that. The subject just, oh, it was magic. Uh, so the research looking at someone else doing creative acts, they're able to do some research on this. Let's see. Um, Again, Csikszentmihalyi, you pronounce that if you can do that, Csikszentmihalyi, uh, he's written a lot about a genius, and so these big creative acts, uh, Darwin's uh, theory of evolution, uh, various uh, artists, uh, that's one thing, so it takes a long time to learn, to go through as a journey, apprentice, journeyman, master, uh, so they need great discipline. That's one of the biggest things he describes, that you need to be driven by yourself. And we'll talk about that in a bit. I will more be looking at the little c creativity, the things you do in class, things that are novel or new for you, but maybe not for the world. I'm not that big a thinker. So here are some of the myths possibly myths. Drugs and alcohol strengthen creativity? In fact, yes. I guess uh, if we had a creativity chart, one or two drinks, yes, more down. But it would help you 
I haven't done it myself, but maybe offering your students one beer might help. University students. So some alcohol does is shown to increase creativity. People argue about whether having structure or not increases creativity. I think giving a lot of structure, giving restrictions, does improve. And we'll see that soon. Fear, deadlines, money. Uh, once you pay a person enough money to survive, more money does not make them more creative. Uh, studies they've done, if you do this fast, I'll give you $15. They're on average slower than the people who aren't offered money. Um, the big joke here, what, when you hear a creative accountant or creative accountancy, uh oh, that normally sounds bad. You don't want your accountants to be too creative, I guess, in their taxes. Uh, but yes, most activities we can use creativity in some form. Um, I'll be showing you my artwork uh, to be discussing this. Uh, so, structure is bad for creativity? I don't think so. Um, I love this middle, this middle panel here. What he's showing, it's, this would fit into Twitter. This is less than 140 characters. Writers working under tight restrictions produce novel material, like, for example, epigrams employing backwards alphabet extinction. That's beautifully written. It is backwardsly alphabeticized. Fits into 140. Having that restriction of 140 characters can encourage creativity. And another example might be haiku, haiku, haiku. The Japanese teachers are here. Haiku? Haiku. Thank, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, that does focus your creativity, show you how to work, where to use it. Um, the opposite example, uh, I don't agree with this, but this is one I found online as the counter example. The unhelpful teacher promotes creativity, but if you don't fail my directions, you fail. Uh, I think this is the wrong model. I think. Uh, some structure is good. If you can give your students guidelines, that's the way to focus them to do better work. I, I play with Lego, and I have a son. Maybe that's good. Uh, and so you can't put the Lego sideways. You must put them in a, in a stacking. And I think that improves your creativity, your options with it. Redu uh, reduced options, more creativity. Again, here's a blank paper, write an essay. Write an essay on these subjects using these, this vocabulary. Oh, this is something you can do, and those restrictions allow you to uh, see what you can do. You don't have to read this, I'd rather you didn't. Uh, I don't see the dates. This uh, cartoonist, I think this is 2008, 10, 11, 2012. He has used the same picture for five years with different dialogues. And uh, not everyone is great, but it's just uh, he's uh, restricted himself to these characters, and he's not a strong artist. But, and yet he's doing quite well with these cartoons. I've been five years at it. So uh, you don't need to be an artist to be creative. I don't know if fast. Finding danger in the off-season in the Pamplona. Normally running with the bowls in the off-season, run with scissors. Thank you. Uh, I love this picture by Picasso. He, of course, is a master, but I think this is a relatively simple picture. So, with or without great skill, you don't need a great uh, uh, complexity show creativity. Um, now, I would call myself a creativist, and yet there are times you don't want creativity in the class. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Unconscious bias. Right. 
teachers in many research projects, do you feel uh, you should increase and encourage creativity? Yes. What does creativity mean to you? Do the job. Follow the rules. That's not kind of proof. Exactly. Um, when they give uh, lists, I'm trying to think of a good example right now, but when they give a list, you put it as a positive feature, and they give, offer words that are practical and versus words that are creative, many people are slower putting the creative words in the positive category. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this well, but it's a sign of bias against creativity in teachers. Um, I want you to be creative, but don't interrupt class, don't do this, don't do this. It's, uh, most teachers have a bias against creativity. Um, I will try to come back to that. I left my notes upstairs. Let's see. Beginners don't need to be creative. We don't want them to be. This one I'm more comfortable with. Uh, anytime you're teaching something, the student needs to learn something before they can use it clearly. My favorite example of this, how are you doing? A typical student will think of the five things. Fine, sick, great. I'm fine, thank you. Oh, okay, good English. A creative student, possibly, or many of my elementary school students, how are you? Bow, fart. Now, as a teacher, sit down. As a creativist, hey, with minimal language skills, you've shown me you have intestinal distress. Go to the bathroom. So I don't normally want that kind of creativity in my class amongst the beginners. I would like them until their level is high enough to make novel sentences, to be learning. So for a beginner, uh, we don't often want a lot of creativity. They need to pick up the basics in English, in wood carving, in painting, before they start going off on their own. Classroom isn't designed for impulsive expression. Um, we've heard, I've heard, that uh, classrooms were designed to create factory workers. Once you learn to read and write and do math, you can work in the factory. I don't need you being loud. I've got more students to focus on. Um, so yeah, this a classroom isn't a place uh, to be to be impulsive to do your own thing. This was an interesting study I read recently. Uh, creative students are more likely to cheat. Homo sapiens. The rational being, the rational ape, uh, creative people are rationalizing apes. Uh, well, uh, I didn't study, but that was because I was sick. If I just do the test, that's not a good example of my real skill. I feel completely comfortable cheating. Uh, so sometimes creative people are somewhat more unethical. This scares me, because I would like to think of myself as creative, but this is some recent research. I'd like to go back to this top one. I'm sorry, I just don't know that I explained it on my blog. Uh, the bias test they use, they have positive and negative and a list of words, and when they time someone, and it's a non-controversial subject, uh, if I pick men and women, and we list sports, it's easy to connect men to sports, men to action. And even the most feminist person will be slower connecting women to sports, women to activities. So that's my impression of the research. The same thing happens when they use creative and practical. People are slower moving uh, positive things into the creative category. Uh, it's an unconscious test of bias. If you want a further explanation, creativity done, let's work right Chick sent me Holly and Michael, uh, Andrew Robinson will tell you most geniuses have nothing to say about school. They never, I did this because of what my teachers taught me. Uh, the best thing they would say, don't hinder your students' creativity. Others, De Bono and Michalko, 
uh, offer up several uh, exercises that they say will increase your creativity. We'll be looking at some of them in a minute. Um, what I like about the Bono and Machalco is they're talking typically about use of English. So even if you're not sure if it will increase their creativity, it's an ESL activity. So at least we're using English possibly in content. Uh, Ken Robinson from his TED talk discusses encouraging it. When we want to encourage creativity, good job, you're very smart. He's not going to work hard again. You might have just exist. So it's common. Oh, I'm smart. I shouldn't have to work hard to do stuff. Uh, I've been taught, you've probably been taught, you've shown a lot of hard work. I can tell you took a lot of time doing this. This took a lot of effort. These are the compliments to increase production. Uh, I've already discussed offering money uh, often does not increase creative thinking. Let's see. So, uh, I have done this a very little, assigning some, some amount of my semester time to personal projects. Daniel Pink, in his book, Drive, I mention that because it's the title of this, uh, of this uh, conference, uh, talks about FedEx days, or uh, Google days, where 20% of your time is for your own projects. So again, it's personal investment, personal motivation to encourage these things. Uh, reducing inhibitions. Nobody is eager to speak at all in my classes for the first few classes. We need to take some time to integrate the students, play some games, uh, just to get them comfortable in class. I'll discuss this a little further here. Jigsen Bihali uh, describes the people who have their personal pictures, their Dilbert cartoons, uh, are more creatively productive than the people in the blank room. As a university teacher myself, my rooms all look like this, and I really can't hang posters on the wall. I'd be in this room for one hour, the next room, the next room, so it doesn't work for me that way. Um, in my class, my students are doing blogging as part of their homework, so I'm working on control of that workspace, their own pictures, their own music, which is so annoying to me. Uh, but control of their own space there. I'd like to discuss controlled distraction. Uh, yes, so, um, when I talked about the prizes and money, focusing people's concentration, this again is factory thinking. If I want to, the Charlie Chaplin film, tighten the widgets, tighten the widgets, tighten the widgets, tighten the widgets. More money will help me do more widgets. Uh, for creative thinking, we don't want that much focus. John Cleese uh, described, I don't know uh, how people get creative ideas, but not from their cell phones. He seemed a little a cranky old man. Then. But, uh, he describes, every time his phone rings, he loses 20 minutes. Yes, okay. So what was I doing? Okay, now I can restart. Uh, so too big a distraction, you lose too much time. No distractions, you're not getting the outside ideas. Controlled distraction, which is my term, but uh, is what De Bono and Michalko uh, are very serious about. Uh, uh, De Bono has a long list of random words, you roll dice to pick some, to create enough distraction. Uh, let's see. Uh, he has a list of random words which would be excellent for us, I think. My suggestion on this subject is use your student's textbook, either the index or vocabulary lists, to randomly as you like, uh, pick uh, a handful of words that they can use. Uh, 
Uh, I'll give you one example here. Well, I'll give you several examples. But I'm going to start with central word. Uh, yes. I would like you to take a moment. Um, I notice we're not really in groups. But if we could, we're welcome to make some groups. Uh, 5, 10, 11. So two or three people together is what I would like. Uh, perhaps one of you or three of you. So here we have five words. And our job, which word is the center? Uh, we could think, well, I don't want to ruin this ex exercise for you. But all four of these words relate to number five, how. So you're making basically four sentences, or five sentences. La, la, la. It's the central word. Because if you have memory, that relates to blah, blah, blah. Uh, singing increases your blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I'd like you to make four or five sentences now. You're welcome to do this together. Which word is central and uh, why? I'll give you a few minutes. I'm kind of, yeah, I, this isn't class, so you're welcome just to imagine it, but uh, elephant is the center because phones have trunk lines and trunks are related to elephants. Uh, elephants sing, there's two sentences, two sentences. Elephants overcome difficulty. Uh, like, wh why is it the central word? You need to link the other four to that central word. Right. Uh, one word, elephant, is the central word. And then, why is memory related to elephant? Why is phone related to elephant? Why is overcome related to elephant? Why is sing related to elephant? Why is elephant the center?
I will jump to the next slide just for a moment. <laughs> Do this again with a different central word using the same. Uh, if you want elephant to be the central word, yes. The trick of this exercise is to use any of these five words as the central word. Uh, so you can start the first one with elephant just because I did, or any of these five. Uh, that's the challenge here. And how many seconds do um, Again, this, this is not English class. Uh, but yeah, you need, to, I would like something like elephant is the central word. There's the first sentence, and then memory relates to elephant because, number two, phones relate to elephants because, uh, I'm fingering five sentences, but uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, set on five sentences. What central word did you choose? All different, what did you choose? Okay. Uh, memory. Phone. I'm glad. All right. Uh, give me two. How do two of them fit into elephants? Technophobia? All right. Uh, gentlemen, what did you choose? Memory. All right. Give me one, one central word or one, how one word connects to memory. You've got connected. Wow, all one sentence. All right. I'm not sure if I really picture that, but all right. Uh, ladies in the back, what did you choose together? memory loss? Wow, okay. Um, we don't need to use all the words in one sentence, but that's fine. Um, yeah, so uh, elephants sing, elephants have memory, uh, elephants use the ground stomping as a kind of phone system, elephants overcome predators. Yeah, so we don't need to use all of them together. But, uh, the trick then was to use one of these words as the center, and then pick a different word as the central word. Uh, good memories will help you overcome problems. Elephants overcome problems. Well, uh, you, know, you can sing the song, We Shall Overcome. Right. Uh, it would be important to not Good memories help overcome problems. Elephants overcome problems. Phones overcome problems. That's not the creative word we're looking for, right? We're looking for uh, five sentences, somewhat better explanation than I gave, but yes. So the trick here, again, uh, to try to do this five times, which I guess would be 25 sentences. And again, these ones came from an elementary school textbook. You could choose uh, for yourself uh, some other vocabulary phrases, I guess, or your university textbooks. So again, I'm not sure how much this improves your creativity. I like it, but it's an ESL activity as well. Right. Again, this. You're right. This came from an elementary school ESL textbook. So these were words the students were supposed to know. The students 
or the textbook I picked this, the students didn't do a lot of writing. So I don't know that those students can handle this one. You're completely right. My next one is a CQ test, a creativity quotient test. Now, an IQ test is thought to measure intelligence, and yet it's measuring something, but not precisely intelligence. If we look at university professors' IQs, we'll get something like this. It, we don't necessarily get uh, Harvard University professors here, Dongsa University professors here, and there's more variation than that. The IQ is measuring something, we call it intelligence, but it's not precisely real world intelligence. The Guilford Alternate Uses Test uh, task, uh, if you took this, if you did this test now and again in two years, your scores would very likely be the same. So it's measuring something. Uh, whether it's it's not exactly measuring, uh, well, famous artists, famous creative people might not have higher scores than people less known for their uh, creativity. It's measuring something, but it doesn't closely, the results don't closely relate to wor real world results. Um, let's take a break. And uh, again, I'll give you two, uh, give you two minutes, I would like you to think of alternative uses for a brick. Not just building a house, but what else can you do with a brick? You have two minutes. A uh, question before we start? Go ahead. Can
gentlemen, one or two uses. So one part of this test is quantity, the brainstorming idea. Now to score this test, uh, before I get into scoring it, I'm even going to hide it. Um, I am not a psychologist. This is a psychological test. University of Indiana, where I found this test, says anyone can, can uh, proctor, can give this test. Still, I would feel uncomfortable making a psychological note about you. Uh, with my background as a three-year biology degree. So, yeah, so um, we're going to look at how to score this. And people do score this test and use the results, use the measurements for things. I'm uncomfortable doing that. But you could make it a little bit of a game in class. So originality. Each response compared to the total I've got an amalgam of them all, but uh, I'm going to start with fluency because it's the easiest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So our fluency is ten. We have ten ideas. Originality. I noticed two people, possibly more, talked about exercise even before I started writing. Two people. So this one is not an original idea. Um, doorstop. I heard from at least one group. I don't. Even, I have to be careful about my own. Uh, it's not original, but maybe. Um, I ha I have never heard cooking tool before, but two of you did. I have heard brick through the window as a weapon, but emergency entrance to your house. That's an original idea from all the ones I have heard. Uh, I have never heard replace wood, but a vegetable brick would do that. I've never heard candle holder either. Uh, and that was only one person out of this group. So we could, one, two, three. Flexibility, different categories. Um, Let's see. This might be one category, breaking things. I'm not sure, this is just my interpretation right now, but a TV stand, or a, a candle holder, or a poor man's shadows, I'm calling that one more category. Replace wood would be number three, cooking tool is four, five. Six. Six categories? All right. Elaboration. Um, weapon would give you a low score. Emergency entrance to home, that's a, a more elaborate answer, so this would be plus one. Uh, the picture and the phrase, poor man's shelves, that's a little more elaborate than just uh, shelving. That would be plus one. So we would get a score here of 20 using this test. You're 
about. <laughs> I have nothing for you, really. Um, now, I have to hurry. Dr. Ellis. Oh, I'm just going to guess the last part of yours. Sorry. You're welcome. Right. Now, when we think of uh, creativity, the thing we've all been taught, I think, is the brainstorming. But of course, the second step is important as well, the selection. And another bad screen here. Uh, one thing I am suggesting here is using uh, textbooks, and of course I'm using my name to show you this is my opinion, this isn't serious formal research. But I like using textbook errors as a way to encourage critical thinking, which would be a way to uh, from your brainstorming to start cutting the ideas down. Brainstorm for quantity, critical thinking for the quality. Uh, this was in my textbook at my university, which I shouldn't have told you the name. Uh, figure out this sentence. Who wins, who loses here? If the winning score is closer to my prediction, 8 to 1, I buy dinner. If you lose, you buy dinner. I'm going to save you some time, because I'm sure. Uh, this is what I think is some crazy bad writing. Uh, yeah. If there's a big win, Li Ping buys. If Hana is wrong, she buys. So in their contest, either both of them buy dinner or nobody buys dinner. So. What I like about this is that this is not so much an ESL question, but a math question. So you get the ESL experts doing well. The math experts might do better on this question. We can spread uh, the kudos in class, spread the compliments in class. Uh, I'll go by quickly. I just can't imagine that someone at Hard Rock Cafe would eat lunch at 12.30. Yeah, that'd be a busy time. Uh, lateral thinking, skip that. Now, I like these lateral thinking exercises. Again, it's an ESL uh, exercise. Joe wants to go home but can't because the man in the mask is waiting for him. What is this about? You're welcome to ask me any question to help you understand. Okay, typically I can answer yes or no, but the man in the mask is not a criminal. Is he a policeman? Of sorts. No, but that idea. Is he a abusive father? No. Is he Zorro? No. He's an umpire. Baseball umpire. Oh. And why is he waiting? Why is he waiting? Oh, okay. Sorry. He's on third base. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so it's just yeah, a. It's, yes. Yeah. Sure, okay. The catcher. Your that not sounds better than umpire. Thank you. I gotta play, I gotta study baseball. are holding children, waiting their turn. Children are handed to a man who holds them while a woman shoots them. If the child is crying, the man tries to stop the crying before the child is shot. Santa Claus is one good example. Santa Claus and an elf. The two other meanings for shot. Yeah, so uh, we're talking about either a needle shot or a camera shot. And marries 20 women, but is in charge with polygamy. Is he a preacher? The priest. All right. Uh, again, this is all on my blog, but there is the link if you want it. Uh, there's many more. 
This is something I like for the students as a creativity prompt. Uh, Yahoo does, uh, it's their way of more page views. Uh, Stars forbidden question to Obama. He couldn't resist. I wonder what it was. Start writing down your ideas. Uh, I would, if you are ready now, I'll take it. Also, do you wear boxers or briefs? Okay, that depends. That's the joke, though, right? Uh, the old guy with pants? That's it. If you're curious, uh, aliens. Now, I've told you contests for money can lower creative uh, production. Still, if it's not for money, if it's just uh, for interest, for fun, as much fun as your class can be, uh, that's a different story. And so here is from the New York, uh, the New Yorker caption contest. And so these are out every week. There's a new one. <coughs> Sorry, Mark. Not quick. Now I can see it, I'm trying to think of something clever. For uh, no, it's just, yeah. uh, no glasses. Ah, oh, <laughs> so that's the end of my presentation with eight seconds to spare. Uh, my information and more details can be found there, creativityproject.blogspot.com.